first item are amendments to the agenda. Does anybody have any amendments to the agenda to offer tonight? Uh, clerk executive session at the beginning. Uh, if there's no objection, we'll move that uh, uh, executive uh, session for administration okay. to the beginning. So. Heather can get out of here. <laughs> Reasonable time. Yeah. Um, are we going to talk about the building? And the other item that I would like to suggest is to talk about the building. <laughs> uh, just for discussion. First things first. No action. And um, maybe we can put that later. At the end? Yeah, at the end. That sounds like a good idea. Remember, our New Year's resolution was to try to yeah, finish eight. business that required the administration here by 8 o'clock so they could go. What about the more important things? Exactly. Uh, if there are no further changes to the uh, or amendments to the agenda, we should uh, carry on. Can I first introduce Ali? Do you want to go ahead? So this is Ollie. This is my sibling. Um, they're junior, and they're going to try it out to be the junior representative or junior class representative to the school board. They're the only junior I could drag here. <laughs> notice. So, but I I really think that the junior class need, and there should be another person who's used to being a representative. So, Ollie's going to try this out. Be nice. Mm -hmm. They're very sweet. So. Do you want to say anything? No. Okay. Cool. <laughs> That's fair. You might want to say something later when we get into yes. it. Yes. Sure. When we get into I it. I very rudely served myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> does, and would it? anybody else like what, well, some what, of this? What is it? What is it? It's, it's shortbread with caramel and chocolate. Would anybody else like oh. some shortbread with caramel and chocolate? <laughs> no. May, may okay, I please have one? Then. <laughs> it's all for Steve. All for me. I mean, yeah. Maybe. Well, if it's all for you, then. What uh, are the board's uh, views uh, with respect to the minutes from January 13th and January 16th, uh, 2020? I'd recommend we accept them. Uh, or move, excuse me. Okay, that's good enough. Um, when I first read them, I thought that we ought to have mentioned the purpose for the executive session, but uh, I realized that, that was mentioned up at the very beginning. I think it would be good form to, to do that. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, but that's the purpose of the... It's a technical, so it doesn't need to be written in. Are there any other uh, comments or suggestions uh, with respect to the minutes for those two dates? If, if there are none, if there are none, then um, all those in favor... Oh, and then on, on the other date, we need to correct the spelling of Britt's name. My name? It's not in oh, R-E-T, yeah, yeah. it's... It's, uh, it's right. the first letter. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, okay. Mike. All right, Mike, so did you... Uh, I moved both of them. I moved you. both of them. Yes, sir. Uh, what is... Uh, well, any further discussion? All those in favor of accepting the minutes as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimously passed. Okay. Uh, public comment is the next item on the agenda. Um, anybody here for public comment? I don't think so. Just the usual suspects. <laughs> so we'll move on to the um, executive session. Uh, and I think. This executive session is for uh, a student matter, is that right, a confidential student matter? So for the record, uh, the, the executive session will be for a um, confidential student matter. Uh, does somebody, uh, will somebody move for us to go into executive session? So move. Uh, so is your first before official <laughs> item of business we're asking you to leave? <laughs> <laughs> It's nice that you're I'm so sorry. Right, thanks for talking about it. Don't forget about us. That's all I ask. See you later. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we'll go into executive session at about five minutes past six, and we'll come get you. So I was very focused in my principal's report this month, basically um, just identifying one question. 
which I think is um, a question that we have begun to discuss um, amongst the leadership team and some of the faculty and some of the students were involved in various conversations, but we'd like to do it in a much more organized way. Um, I shared with you some snippets from the conversation that I had with a group of, smallish group of staff, um, which I think, um, particularly in terms of identifying some of the structures that are deeply rooted in the school that are seen to be impediments to moving forward. Um, but I think this is, um, this is a minority view. I don't think it represents a, a cross-section. And um, so I think that's, our, that's the elephant in the room that is uh, important for every conversation that happens. Where are we going? And how are we going to get there? These are conversations you're having with oh, the teachers. Yeah. Is it universally a minority view? Like everyone, or is it's, it? It sounds like a universal <laughs> minority. Right. Like maybe <laughs> every student said, I don't know. Is that possible? It feels yeah. like an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> well, if everywhere that you went to talk about it was in a minority view. No, this conversation that I shared with you was from a particular group of people mm -hmm. that had a conversation about where are we going, what uh -huh. would we like to see. Uh -huh. um, I don't believe it's representative of the larger faculty and staff in general. Mm -hmm. So it's just a small sample is what you're saying. It's a small sample. I think that, sorry, the, which is you know, typical, you're not going to get buy-in from, from all stakeholders, you know, the amount of time that folks have been talking about these ideas. And I think it's um, appropriate to celebrate the fact that, you know, there is this pocket and maybe even several other pockets that you haven't had a chance to dipstick that are really interested in moving the school forward in the direction that the data has been talking about. Yeah, I mean, I, when I wrote this, I thought this was a fairly positive indication that people were able to identify and articulate pretty clearly some of the things that they think need to be addressed in order to sort of make the kinds of changes that are going to result in a community that is providing a relevant, meaningful growth and development experience for its kids. Um, Is the group that you spoke with self-selected or chosen at random? Um, what kind of representative group do you think it might have been? So it was, uh, it was definitely um, a group of people that um, were interested in questions of social emotional learning and issues of equity and culture. So it was a, a committee of two different committees that had merged. A committee of folks who were really interested in working on how the school becomes more responsive to social emotional needs and a group of people who are interested in equity as it exists in our culture or doesn't exist. It's a combined combination of those groups. So yes, sort of self-selected. It wasn't the, uh, the toilet repair committee. <laughs> Which is fundamental. <laughs> And those are the folks that did not agree with this vision? Is that what you're saying? Those are the folks that identified this. They identified this. So this is their vision. Yeah. But you don't think it's pervasive, this vision? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't know what the percentages look like, mm -hmm. if you had to guess. Is this a, a very small minority position? 
you suppose? I think people in general are terrified by change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that no, there's, it's no different here. And people are going to hold on to what they know because what they don't know terrifies them. And I don't know if this was the same um, outcome, but I know that there were a bunch of teachers who had a conversations with, you know, drama kids about like how do you make the school system better, and specifically they were asking like, what do students need? What do the teachers need? And it was really fascinating. Where like a lot of us had a lot of, like, we want it to be better, and here's how we think it's going to be better, regardless of whether or not that's actually feasible. But like. You know, we want it to just as much as the teachers do, and like I think, I mean, for a lot of us, it's like the question, like, what do you, what do the students think teachers need, was like really fascinating because it's like, for a lot of the time, we just have to sit in class and watch them as they struggle to do enough, struggle to have enough time to do everything they need to do, actually work with students, and it's like we know what they need, but there's just no. I mean, there's no good way to vocalize it. There's no because, like, how do you help your teacher get more time? Like, how do you do that? Um, but it was a really beneficial conversation for both students and teachers. I know Ollie and um, a bunch of my friends participated in it. And it was very like <coughs> off the cuff, kind of thrown together last minute. We didn't even know it was happening until Constance like, like we're intervention. having a conversation. Yeah, it felt like an intervention of sorts, um, or just kind of sprung on us last minute. And we're like, oh, okay. There's now like 20 people here talking to us about education. Um, but yeah, like, it, and essentially we did come up with this where it's like, the, there's a broken system here. There's a lot of things that we're uncomfortable with and want to stop. How do we do that? <laughs> and what is actually beneficial and what is, like, what, what is feasible, what is actually going to be beneficial and what is just like, and, and what's more like, I don't know, big picture that's not necessarily like finite. Um, but it was, it was wonderful to especially have teachers sit down and be like, well, what do you guys need? And how can we help you do that? Because that's not a conversation that happens a lot in schools. So it was very nice. So I don't know if that's related to this in, this in particular, but it was, again, a group of teachers that were wanted to help and wanted to help their students and just didn't know how. And the first step is asking. So it's very nice. I especially liked your comment mm -hmm. that students wanted to know what they could do for teachers also. I really <laughs> like the both directions. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I think what's universal is that people would like things to be different. <laughs> yeah. But whether that translates into whether people are willing to change make the change that would bring about a difference. Like it's kind of like everybody thinks everybody else should take the first mm -hmm. step and it's, it's not going to work that way. Uh, uh, so I, I, um, I think we have uh, our work cut out for us, <laughs> <laughs> if you will. Um, so I'm curious, do you think that these are, are um, values that we as a board share with you? I have no idea. I have no idea, but it would be a wonderful discussion. Mm -hmm. um, i got to figure out whether somebody shares them. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? Because <laughs> otherwise, I feel like I'm a a man with a weird head. <laughs> so, what would it look like to you if you, if we shared them? Like, what would we be doing as a board if we shared the, these values with you? I'd share them with you, but collectively shared them. Um, I think that would be a um, a motivating factor for a lot of people in the building that if they thought that somebody besides a small group of 
crazy folks <laughs> who are thinking these things. I'm on a larger group of crazy folks <laughs> who's thinking them. So it's comfort and company. No, I think I think if the board were to somehow articulate or um, make some kind of a statement about uh, wanting change in some particular way, it might be helpful. I think people, you know, most people sort of do what they, everybody wants to do a good job, right? Mm -hmm. And so everybody's doing what they think is a good job in the only way they know how. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think first step towards <coughs> being able to think outside what they, what they know is that, that they have permission from, mm -hmm. I mean, I've been telling them that since the day I arrived, you know, mm -hmm. you, you have permission to try new things and I'm not going to like come down on you if you fall on your face. <coughs> I'm going to be excited about that and try and figure out ways to support you. But um, So let me say, and I have to say this publicly because we're on television, I think us hiring you intentionally was saying that we support these values. I think us hiring Dave, uh, Adam, you know, at the at the SU level was the same thing, that it was us saying, we really want to change the way we've thought about this before. We want that kind of forward thinking, creative thinking, the hard thinking, right, that really requires us to think about not what we don't want, it's easy to identify that, but what do we really, what do we want and how do we get there, which is a much harder thing because you're right, people are resistant to risking and feeling vulnerable and as we know, vulnerability should be a strength, but it's seen as a, as a weakness. So I think us hiring you was our first step in saying, yeah, these are values that we, we also agree with you. And the question is, what more do we do, us getting a bond together and saying we want a building that reflects those values is another way of us saying, we, we're with you, we absolutely agree with that. Um, Uh, but, uh, but I'm sort of, uh, I can issue a statement saying, we well, rubber stamp this, but I'm not sure that that's necessarily going to be okay because we said so. Because that's really, not, our relationship is a much broader one. I want to meddle in there and say, what he said, do it, um, as tempting as that would be. But I, I do think that we, I, I can speak for me, I looked at these and went, yeah, there they are, right on paper. This is this is great and we should, you know, somehow endorse it um, because it's the right thing to do and it's the direction that everyone is, you know, not just this school but most schools are really looking at how can we educate our kids better with both content and social emotional stuff. So. Right. But even if we had sort of universal agreement about these values, mm -hmm. Uh, the devil is in the details right. about how we, how we get there. Right. And um, I think um, there's a lot of conversation amongst the faculty and staff of the school about this idea of like um, building the airplane while, we, while we're flying it, mm -hmm. right? Which is, is not an idea which is uh, a, a very positive one. Um, yeah, that feels right, yeah. And, uh, so a lot of parachutes. Pe <laughs> people have sort of used that metaphor in the past to sort of describe school change, and um, I don't think it's gone over very well. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, you know, you've got people who want to create the system completely before it's launched, and then you've got people who realize that you can not have any idea about how things are going to go until you start doing some of them and you have to build and reflect and it's a process of right. so um, you have that right. clash of the way people think about things and it makes it and probably a hundred other variations within that um, so um, building consensus I think about how to move forward is tricky task. Um, 
any more comment or reflection on the uh, principal's uh, report? Uh, if not, we'll, we'll move to the next item. Um, if that's okay, unless you need to get out of here right quick. Okay. Can, can we then uh, move to the superintendent's incidental report? And over to you, Any questions? Any questions? If you had a, a chance to uh, read that report, um, then the, your silence makes me think. Um, time to move on. It's time to move on. <laughs> um, in that case, if there's no objection, I'd like to uh, move the uh, discussion about uh, the building uh, to the next item. And we have the benefit of the presence of the ghost of boards past. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, just for background information, uh, I think I've been on the board now for about three years, maybe three and a half, because uh, I filled up a resigned post. And in those three years, regularly, there was talk about Floating a bond, I think is the term, to repair the roof, to do various other kinds of things. Oops. And, and mull over. Uh, to mull over yeah, that stuff. Yeah. And um, right now, it seems, uh, you may think that there's a, a confluence, uh, a simultaneous uh, circumstances come up to make the talk of a bond particularly important and particularly timely. So what I handed around uh, the table to you is uh, uh, the draft timeline from Black River Design, the architects, and an initial building uh, drawing sketch if you think the print is tiny on that, you should have seen it when it was on 8 by 11 paper. Uh, it's still small, sorry. Um, so if, if the board is, uh, and I got the sense from prior meetings that the board was ready to get down on this uh, bond uh, issue finally and seriously and completely, uh, to ask uh, the voters uh, to present them uh, the reasons why we think a bond is necessary. And the timeline, uh, you can see that the draft timeline is to um, request the bond vote in November, which gives us not a lot of time to do what we need to do, which is to reach out to uh, the various uh, communities some of that has already started. We had the benefit, uh, some board members had the benefit of visiting with students in the journalism class to get their ideas of uh, what was needed in the school. Uh, very shortly, um, David agreed that uh, it, it was appropriate now for board members to uh, reach out, uh, expand from the students to the faculty to ask them what they think uh, what, what they would uh, need or like uh, in the bond process with respect to what's in the classroom. And then um, we have yet to reach out to uh, business owners in the community and uh, in the community at large, and, but especially uh, in uh, Hardwick and Woodbury and uh, Greensboro. Um, so, you know, there's there's some time to do this uh, before November, but we, we got to kick it off and get it underway now. So, one of the reasons why it's so appropriate to start seriously looking at the bond issue now is that there are uh, some 
engineering improvements that uh, need to be made uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, and that is what Todd is going to help us with. So, Todd, can you go over um, this? Yeah, this, well, no, that's, that's the timeline. <clears throat> I, the timeline, yes. I know we it's not on the agenda to vote. I just need a thumbs up, thumbs down, because me, the architect, and whether Dave wants to sit in or Steve, we got to have a meeting to get this going. That's the black dot over here. That's middle of February. Our final decision on how we want to go will be in April. But he's got a bunch to do between now and then, and we also got some discussing to do as far as whether we go with the full boat, with the OSSU, the rec building, the band, the, the chorus, the well, the additional stuff on there, and whatever other. But right now, we just need to get the ball rolling. This is what the architect wants. They want to get started. The permits and stuff we got to look into because it's square footage and everything else. There's stuff I've got to do, and then. If there's any questions as far as later on, I can be on the agenda as far as anything pertaining to the structure and uh, what we need. Um, but in the sheet I handed out, there's the total fees that do all this between now and November to do all the planning. Yeah. Between now and November. And I noticed you didn't include hazardous materials. Uh, does that mean asbestos? Architect doesn't do the asbestos. I got to do that somewhere. That, that's in. Okay. That's in the bond. No. That's in the bond. Okay. There's Thank two you. areas we've got to deal with, depending on how extensive we go with this. If we're redoing the science rooms, then the floor is going to come up. And there are asbestos tiles. Suspected. Have not been tested. And the weight room has one section that is suspected. There used to be asbestos around some of the pipes coming in out of the ceiling. Mm -hmm. out of the and roof. there probably still is. The suspect probably can be uh, it hasn't encapsulated. Been it can be encapsulated or removed okay. while they're doing them. Because a lot of the heating stuff, depending on which way we go for a heating system, um, I had a few people come up to me and look into geothermal, so I'm looking into that option too. So a few jaws dropped and a few eyeballs went, oh really? So when we get our heating and our cooling dealt with, I don't need all the big machines. I can do this with smaller machines. Power is going to be a little higher, but I won't. And also converting the boiler over from oil to, to gas which would be cheaper, more efficient heat for a secondary heat. Is there a possibility that we could add more solar panels to the array in East Hardwick to take care of some of that electric? My heat? last electrical electric bill was 400 and some odd dollars. I haven't seen this month uh, yet, but the wow. solar array part was the high part. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. But my electric bill, as far as the Hardwick Electric, was 400 and some odd dollars. There's been a reduction of about, it looks like it's going to be average around between 10 and 15 percent. <coughs> Todd, what is the, what is the choose option and what, what scope? Is that, is that the entire scope of the design? What is, what is choose option? What now? What does choose option on April 1st mean? What, that's choose everything. Choose how, how we want to go, whether we're going to go. Like Steve said at the beginning, just cover what we need to cover to be code compliant, all the way up to, which is not the, that building is not on that, is that plus the OSSU building on the property. That seems like a lot of work to do in a month to make sure this They've is. They've already a, done a lot of it. They've yeah, already I mean, done a lot of it. So there's consensus about the community rec center that's about. That's where we did. No, so that's where we got to go. And, that, and I've already been talking to people, but that's, that's the board's got to get out there and if we want the rec center, if we don't want the rec center. 
My, my push of the rec center is one, we reduce the uh, length of basketball practices so they're not here until 10 o'clock at night. Number two is we're doing a lot more services here in town because it's a big building. Instead of wear and tear on the gym, we can have the rec center for that. They can also do their dances in there. As far as school, dance, prom, whatever, they can do that here in that building and any other major events. We can gear that building for that. Yes, it's going to have a basketball court, but it's not going to be used primarily for basketball. Summer tennis could be converted into winter tennis, volleyball, a bunch of events there. Also having the bathrooms to serve the rec room. Instead of using, having to keep somebody down there to keep an eye on that end of the building when nobody's there because they, they want to use the bathroom. And then how do we prioritize the scope uh, to best meet the educational mission? I mean, how do we decide whether the community rec center is worth the four million or whatever it's going to cost it's to build the not, thing? It's not. It's 1.8 million, actually. Well, what was, his, what was his square footage cost he gave us last year? Because that, that building's attached to the building. If it was on its own, it would be 4.6. But it's attached to the building. Well, by the time you combine it, the access and the equipment is about 8,000 square feet. And mm -hmm. John gave us a rough square footage cost number last time. Does anyone recall what that was? 350 bucks a square foot, something like that. Wasn't that the, wasn't it in that ballpark? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that wasn't that came? Can you what his number was? What was his square footage number for new for new construction? Well, while he's looking that up, I'll just interject that academics matters, but also we're asking the community members to lay out a lot of money. We also want to build a building that gets used significantly by the community as well, too. I mean, there's a larger equation here, too. We want to give back, and we want this building to be used. And I think we want to put that pretty high up on the calculus there. That would be my take. 2.5, my mistake. My mistake, 2.5, the OSSU was 1.6. I got the numbers. Sorry. <coughs> so can I ask a clarifying question? What Todd is asking for today is a thumbs up to go ahead with Planning. this work, which is going to be beneficial whether to meet, the, to meet the November deadline, we need to Right, but whether, but, but whether there's this giant addition and renovation or whatever, Todd still needs a thumbs up just to address some of the inadequacies of the building, even if we decide not to build a giant new building, um, just to simply address some of the electrical issues and all yes. of that. This is required, is that true? So, Commitment, no matter what, seems it has to be for this $26,700. Well, and I mean, we either go with, um, this is a basic renovation here. So for that would be for 13 nine. But if we add all this, this is the whole package with everything. Got it. So it's going to cost us at least 13000 to get Right, no matter what, it's like money. Fourteen grand. We have to get right. Yeah. That makes more sense. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. So the, the question is, can we give a thumbs up if it isn't on our? It's not a vote. Decided? It's not a vote. I just it's want. Just a, I just want to go do your job. Go do my job. Okay. And it's, you can consult with Dave or whatever you want to do, and tell him to tell me tomorrow, get moving or what. I, I I know you can't vote on it tonight, but I can't wait till March. Your March meeting, right? I guess I would say that that's. Um, I think it makes perfect sense to um, get going with your with your with your fees and whatever soft costs you need. It makes perfect sense. My I have deep concerns that we're prepared to make an incredibly important decision in a, in a month. I just I unless I'm missing a lot of unless I'm missing something, I'm not I'm not sensing you know, a clear consensus about what we're trying to accomplish here. But maybe I'm 
obviously I'm missing a lot of information, but it seems like they're you're trying to make a lot of very important, tough decisions in a month. That seems like a very short period of time to bring this many people along, but I'm, maybe I'm missing something. Is the, um, at, at this very beginning stage, uh, other than these fees, we need to push this thing along at the beginning. Nothing is set in concrete, no pun intended. But if you notice the, uh, the schematic design and estimating, uh, goes up to November. So potentially, we have until, uh, we have a little while to develop that stuff, <coughs> to, to address those concerns. And, uh, you know, ultimately, I think what, what the board has to do is identify uh, the big picture and then base all of its recommendations on that. Yeah. For example, there's a question of expenses and revenues to cover this. I mean, as the basis for thinking about this, uh, just to grab an example out of thin air, the uh, geothermal heating and cooling, no oil. So these are long-term uh, benefits have to be the basis of all these improvements. It's a little controversial, I hear, to structure uh, the school to get revenue. You know, if a tennis club wants to uh, have a winter tennis session in a field house, there's revenue. If charge it's, rent to and charge rent. Yeah. Uh, and if the state needs a place to meet at this confluence of three or four counties, mm -hmm. there's something in there. Uh, it reduces wear and tear on the gym. That's, those are just minor examples of, I think, what the big thinking is going to be. You've got expenses that we have no control over, uh, salaries. Um, operating expenses to a limited extent. So those, we have to understand what those are. In terms of uh, revenue, uh, we have to understand what revenue is available. And by comparing the thinking on both those aspects, we will be able to uh, assess the practicality of doing all of this work. So, um, here's another example. I gave you some examples on the expense side that we'll have to be acquainted with. On the revenue side, um, there are a lot of students that uh, go to the tech center. Um, there are a lot of students that homeschool. There's a lot of students that I say a lot, but I think the total number is somewhere in the area of 40 that, that go out to early college or the tech center or whatever. Um, how do we get them here? We get them here by first understanding why they went elsewhere. Are programs not available here? Is that why they go to the tech center or the uh, school? Uh, if that is some of the reasons that people leave here, then maybe we can change what we do here to attract them back. Because as far as I understand, the demographics, the demographics of student enrollment, they're going down. And it's not going to cease going down for some while. So the, the revenue source is potentially out there, is the students to come here. And there's a lot of uh, study to be done by that. And I think we can do it by November for sure, probably earlier, to get an idea of what kind of revenue stream is out there and to build on the basis of 
building the revenue stream, which is in large part to get students to come here. For example, I hope no one at the tech center is looking at this video, but I understand there are, uh, there's a waiting list for some programs at the tech center. Why can't we do them here? You may have heard of Billie Eilish, who recently won uh, a Grammy for her five Grammys, for a great album, which she produced in her bedroom with her brother on her own tech. So can we have a media arts academy here, in addition to a performing arts academy, in addition to the language arts academy, in addition to every kind of academy you can think of, and draw students, read revenue here. And so lowering the long-term expenses, raising the sources of revenue, um, that is the logic. That's the, the logic that this is built on. And I think ultimately what can be really powerful is if the, the staff, you know, the building vision, the student vision is driving all that stuff. Because, um, you know, when you say, well, the, this will inform what action we take, I think ultimately that vision has to inform that as well. So It's like the so, weight room on this design. What's that? The weight room, the chorus room, the band room, yeah. the expansion of the auditorium. A lot of that came from the students. Student ideas. And student also ideas. our locker room issue. So having a visiting locker room and the health class down there instead of the health class having to go all the way down yeah. to this end. And I've said this before, but you know the school is working on a, on a long-range roadmap, a vision. Um, so if you take that, and I mean that's something that you'll have in future years as well. You can constantly come back to that. You know, as staff may change over. You know, here's this this roadmap, which can be flexible, but at least it's documented. You know, what we're about is documented where we're headed as documented as a school. Absolutely. And uh, David uh, is sanctioning, in terms of now talking about where all these ideas are coming from, uh, David has told me, go ahead, consult with the, the faculty, mm -hmm. and pretty soon I'll be um, soliciting uh, which one of you may be interested. Um, most, most, uh, in the near future is to talk to the science faculty, see what they think. What is their classroom? Uh, how should that be outfitted? And so it's students, faculty, get the, I mean, this is really going to be a business model, and then consulting the uh, uh, business leaders in the Hazen community. I.e. the taxpayer. Well, they have the <laughs> ultimate decision. Yeah, but the, those businesses oh, well, they happen to there, be taxpayers they, they too. Pay a lot of taxes. What a coincidence! Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, getting their idea of does this is this a good business plan? And we'll have to talk about expenses and revenue to make ourselves understood to this cohort, and then out wider to the community. I mean. You know, who wants, to, who could use a field house? Maybe the funeral home? For large, maybe my gathering, if this doesn't go to anywhere. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, there, there have been some great sort of ideas about how to really look down the road um, and think big. And so there's some, some, some great ideas and intuitions and initiatives. I guess my my question was, are those all are all those great ideas, are they in this plan yet or not? No. They're not. Okay. Because that's I mean that's why if you look so that was sort of the basis of my question was this schedule, if you look the way it's structured, meaning starting next week. They're going to start an asbestos survey, program of space needs, civil engineering, structural design, conceptual design. This schedule really assumes everyone's happy with this plan and you're running with it. So that's, so that's the basis of my, of my question, is, is there seems to be a disconnect between this schedule, which is really, okay, we've got a design, let's run with it, how long does it take, 
and what I'm hearing about, we've got these wonderful ideas that we want to explore. And I, and I would just say that I would, I would encourage you to explore all the wonderful ideas you can. And, um, but again, I may have missed a critical piece in the development of this current plan. You know, uh, it, this is not set in stone. I mean, if we go along here and we see so one of these ideas is impractical, even though we may have chosen the design option for it, it will go nowhere because we've, we've made a, a rational decision that it's just not supportable. But to start off, to start off, it's easier to, I think, and uh, open to, of course, let's discuss this. It's easier to have uh, items out there at the beginning and drop them later rather than not have them there at the beginning and add them later. I don't know why, but it seems like that would be easier. And as long as there's a basis to get them in there in the first place, then if you balance the pros and cons, I think it's better to, to have them part of the design and then if they're not justified, drop them later. So, so two things. To your point, it means we need to start talking to teachers sooner than later right. and, and students. And number two, this is a process question about the OSSU building. How does, is that a decision that the Hazen board makes? Hazen you know, property. Hmm? It's Hazen property. It's, well, it's Hazen property, but is there a question, would, would the OSSU board at any point have yeah. to weigh in? It wouldn't be our building necessarily, but it would have to weigh in because it would mean paying rent to Hazen. Right, and right. Um, I mean, that's rent that, that we're already paying. Right, right, right. Um, to someone else. What's that? Yeah. To the Daniels building. Right. And we're actually, um, this is one of two projects we're looking at. So I, I guess there's a philosophical issue as well that the OSSU board needs to give it a thumbs up as well. Mm -hmm. about whether the OSSU um, building should be on Hazen property. I'm not saying it will or it won't, but there may be some people who go, uh, church and state, or whatever it is that they <laughs> might say, right? Um, I, I'm just speculating because, you know, I've been surprised before with people who I thought were cool stuff who aren't. So, so maybe, maybe the Craftsbury people represent the... I, I, location. I'm not saying that out loud. <laughs> no, it's, it may not even be that. It, it I, could be I, the elementaries, right? I mean, who knows? But when I we started this, I thought it made sense because Hazen's got a lot of property, and this is a Hazen. This will be a Hazen building, and I think if we, it's one of those things. Just I think it's a simple sell to the taxpayers is instead of the money going to Montpelier, it's staying in town. It's staying in in this school. And, and my thought is if we build it, they will come, but I think the OSSU's board decision is do they want to come here? And if they do, then we keep it in the plan. If they don't, that's why I think you're going at right there. Right. Okay. I just think that before we do a thumbs up on this, we need to bring it in front of the OSSU board, which has not been raised at all. Have some influence there. We'll get it on the agenda. <laughs> well, remember, the thumb is just a thumb. This is a, a straw poll. And if the OSS says, OSSU says, no, we... Then it's just another section of the bond down, and it won't be whatever it is, it'll be left. There were several other options we discussed. There was a, a therapeutic facility. There was a hands-on <laughs> you know, student um, maker space. So, I mean, if you, if you build a building, it could serve multiple purposes. Although, I guess you'd want to, if you're building it, you want to tailor it to whatever. Yeah. So, this is a definitely a straw poll. Uh, it's your advice what we're going to do this week. But uh, Patrick is right. I mean, we're going to get into gear on this and get a better picture of what's what's doable and what's clearly out of the question. I'll get an answer for you, Pat. Well, and then I guess if we're doing thumbs up, then we need to commit to having those conversations so that we're better informed 
next month and the month after to be able to kind of know more in terms of scope. We have to commit to it. We can't just sort of say, oh, that's great. Right, absolutely. Oops, it's November. And, you know, without having gone to the meeting, I kind of like started myself. And, and it would be a great pleasure to have uh, some other members of the board uh, visit with the science faculty, for example. So I also and want to make myself pretty clear. I mean, I'm in total support of starting to pay for the services we need to figure out what we're doing. I have serious misgivings about this point in the schedule that we're choosing an option in, in a month and a half, I think, is is impossible. I don't know how that's going to happen. Is that, is that something? Um, I'll talk to him and see. Would you be more comfortable in June? No, I just don't. <laughs> I mean, I, it seems, again, unless I've missed something, and there's a lot of good thinking that needs to happen before you are, we, you, this entire organization is prepared to make an intelligent decision. But again, I may have missed a lot of process here. Uh, I'm not sure you did, but I mean, we all know this is an architect speaking, right? So, well, if I could jump in here, like the OSSD building for me is actually somewhat problematic because that's a hefty price tag on there. And if there's anything that's going to I mean, every bit of this bond is going to be gone over in scrupulous detail. If we're going to ask that, we've got to be really clear that that's going to benefit the taxpayers because that's immediately going to fragment the discussion away from what's best for the kids versus administration. And those are two very different conversations. And I'm not sure we want to go down the rat hole of what's best for the administration versus what's best for the kids. Well, I think the, we need to think long and hard that that building makes financial sense for Hazen before we put our go-ahead on it. And for OSSU. For the OSSU building, yeah. That's a very different thing than building a community rec center where it's going to be much more evident that that's benefiting a huge number of people. That's much more transparent. But you're right. I mean, even building something for the benefit of the administration, if you scratch the surface, why is the administration there? For the benefit of the students. So that's why we start from ground zero, or I should say that's the best place to start, and then expand from there and, and go up. But we've got to be clear that we can, when we are asked these questions, because we live in a community of builders, that we're going to be able to justify what that price tag is, because we are going to be asked that. And we're going to have to, if we do go that direction, realize that potentially may suck up a lot of conversation in an avenue that maybe we don't want the conversation to go. We're not only going to be able to discuss the price aspects of this, but I have to stress, this is a business plan. This has got to work in the long term. We've got to know the things we, we can't control, like salaries, health, that kind of things. The things we can, and what the, the critical mass of stuff is that we can do to build the revenue side of this. So, you know, if people want to know how much a square foot of this design costs, we'll come up with that. That's easy. But the, the real justification of this has got to be a business plan, not just an architect's plan. This is a business plan, and it's a long-term business plan. And everyone's going to help us. I'm just saying that there's a different, I, I totally understand that. We don't need to belabor it. But there is a different value for square footage in a community center versus square footage in the administration value. And we should acknowledge that up front. It will have a different community value. And community value is really going to matter because it's a building for the community. So I, I think Patrick's right. We, that's a pretty close deadline coming up. And we want to be, we want to be absolutely clear that we've meticulously gone through. And we really know what we're talking about because we are going to be asked all those questions. So um, what I would suggest, because I think you're right, but the reality is everyone's paying for the OSSU building now anyway. Right? Like we all, because of us being in the OSSU, we're paying rent. We're, oh, I know. Right? I so know. the question I think is that maybe the next step for the OSSU side um, is to have a conversation and bring John into the conversation to really look at the, the financials of what that would mean if, if it's on our property in terms of is it an asset to, yeah, to Hazen. Because at the end of the day, 
Could we kick them out? Yeah, and use the building. Not that I'm suggesting we would do that, but you know, the, the question is, it's an asset that will become part of the Hazen campus, and we have a tenant that will be paying us the, the rent, us Hazen, the rent to be using that building. So I think, you know, how we we frame that part of the business plan is as, as important in terms of how it people understand what it means to have that. But at the end of the day, it's going to be Hazen's asset. The only thing we're being asked for tonight is whether we should, whether we're on board with spending a total of 26700 We know we need to spend about 14000 of that simply to catch up with uh, deferred maintenance and code and codes with this building, the current building. And so what you need to give thumbs up on, Mike, is a time to start the time, stop the clock on the timeline yes. to have, bring the vote to bond in November. If we don't yes. start today, and starting includes these expenses. Yes. Well, so what if we held off on the expense for the uh, OSU offices? I mean, that's nine grand right there. Okay. Because um, we're still, like I said, trying to figure out, you know, we have several options. Um, there's this the, is not money. There's the messaging piece that you're talking about. Um, I think, you know, we could always look at that later. Yep, that seems good to me. Sure. Um, but I, I think that spending some money to plan this is essential as we go forward making the decisions about all three of these uh, routes. Yeah, am I correct that if you don't spend the 9000 on the OSSU offices to plan for that, you won't be ready to make a decision for sure in April about whether that's included in a longer term planning for bond vote in November. There's just a question. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. It's it true, off. right? Like, there's no off. way, I mean, if it's right. a short timeline now, take it off. there's no way we're going to. So let's say that, and, and I don't uh, need Patrick's advice here, that this is a really short timeline. What happens if we say, let's go for it, and we get to that timeline and we don't feel comfortable with the information we have to make a decision about in November, what happens then? Do, can we just say, okay, we'll the, have to push it out? Push out the timeline. So we're not really committing to anything. But there's well, a couple of let's get some Let's get some planning going. Exactly. Okay. I mean, we'll, we'll find out by next meeting just how, how firm that uh, deadline is in April. And there's a number of called a draft timeline. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Draft. Draft. So is that assuming I get it okay to go? Can we yeah, go around bye. the table and take a straw poll? What do you say? I think. Go Are we doing option one, door one, door two, door three, or just door one? No, we're just going to get start the timeline so I can meet with the uh, meet with the He's architect really and get started. And He's asking those fees, for the those whole fees nine are yards. these are owed at the end. <laughs> right, but we're talking about the whole nine yards. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Do I count on this? No. We'd like to hear your opinion. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holly? Holly, what do you think? Thumbs um, up. That looked yeah. like a thumbs up. To yeah. Me. <laughs> Patrick. Go spend some money to make some money. To get started? Yes. Okay. The architect says to get started, yes. Amy says yes. Definitely. Yes. Get started. Michael? Yes. I think you got your straw vote. Thank See you. Ya. Bye. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have a good evening. Bye. -bye. Thanks, Todd. Very Andrew, well. did you vote aye? Yes. The, uh, the excitement has just started. I want to keep bringing these very pretty color jerseys. Exactly. Um, very well, we, we pushed the, uh, the building uh, up, and so the uh, <coughs> next item is the SU board report out. And if I may defer to uh, the chair of the OSSU board for that, surprise, surprise. Um, I've been in so many meetings, I can't. <laughs> well, I seem to recall at the, at the last meeting, um, we were talking about uh, how a lot of time is going to be spent on teacher negotiations. Yes. 
<laughs> yes, it is. And that's pretty much, I think, all we talked about. Yes. Isn't it? Although we did have an interesting conversation um, in our meanderings about the whole social um, emotional learning versus content mm. and what's more important and mm. the values and really recognizing, and I, I don't think we took a straw poll, but there was a lot of sentiment to really have that conversation and to, to really push that aware that kids not can't learn if they're you know, not also knowing how to be with each other and feeling good about themselves and that how do we translate that. So again, this has been kind of a, how do we we talk about those values and that, that they ripple down so that people in the community know but also the teachers know and parents know that we are concerned about the whole child um, and want our you know our budgets to reflect that and to be consistent about the policies that we're we're passing and um, the way we negotiate like that that we're really wanting our values to be translated out in how we behave towards each other and how we um, you know how we support teachers um, and I think that the, the way we're negotiating and I'll say this personally that we're negotiating in a much more collaborative way than we have before which is I think sending a message is that we're having these conversations with groups of people who have a common interest in each other but also in the children ultimately who these teachers are teaching so it, it's it's been a, a learning curve and I think we are doing okay. I think we still have some folks who are in an old way of responding to relationships in general, but we, we're being firm but loving. <laughs> Good old Dr. Spock. Um, <laughs> Benjamin Spock, not, the, not the, that one. <laughs> That's how old I am. Yeah, I don't know. I got a little, like, I brow thing. <laughs> I didn't even know who Gary Coleman was. Just so you know. So, oh, 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 that's bullying. That's it is. Bullying. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I immediately went to Dr. Spock. It's like live long. Of problem. course you did. That's yeah, why Mr. I Spock clarified it. It's okay. Mr. Spock anyway. That's Mr. Spock, Mr. Spock. not a doctor. Like, I'm sorry. It's, I was coming when she said. And the only reason I made fun about the Gary Coleman is that you said it's a terrible show because it was a reference and I'm going, I knew exactly who Gary Coleman was. It's a was. show from 2003 and all the yes. jokes are very dated. That's all I'm saying. That's all. I, I, that's I, not I, bullying. I was okay. two years old. Anyway. So, um, I, was I don't bored. know, was there anything, anything <laughs> else that we... Uh, <laughs> I think that was basically it. Uh, that, that sums it up, I think, for, for the big stuff we talked about, the little stuff. Is gone, but yeah. Um, Gary Coleman. Well, we also talked a little bit, and I was probably too oblique in this, in talking about how we talk about the things that we as boards decide on. That when we pass a budget, we as board members need to be letting people know why we pass these boards, why we pass these budgets, and not anticipate what what voters will or won't do, but to be able to say we've done work on this, and that you need to know from our perspective this is a budget that needs to be passed and we support it um, and urge you to as well and yes it may feel like it's going up but that there are reasons for it because education is you know is more challenging and we want to be more equitable right so so that sort of those are the conversations um, that we had so there's the show that we saw was what is it? it first performed on Ollie's birthday on Ollie's day of birth. Oh really? It's like the same day. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. I rest my case. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. There you have awesome. the uh, SU board report out. Um, are we done with this, or do you have more questions for Amy? Uh, if not, um, the next item I see is the uh, consent agenda. And it has three items on it, approving the monthly financial narrative for the budget adjustment, which is in the board record for today, uh, approve the vouchers, and uh, I don't think, do we have a treasurer's report? I'm not sure we do. Something in there. I know we have that uh, dashboard of cost. Oh, okay. I don't know if I lost my file. I don't know if I lost my file. 
Same thing. Same number. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had a good one last time. That's really fascinating. It's like, I just, I just carry around all the papers in my bag, and like, my teacher's like, no. I don't see a treasurer's report. Usually we, we, uh, we do those uh, periodically for uh, a couple of uh, months at a time, uh, not monthly. Um, so can I um, point out that John did this really cool thing at the OSSU board under construction where he did facility spending and food service spending. And at the OSSU, we got a, um, a comparison between schools, which I think was really interesting. And in fact, Hazen uses food services less than any of the other schools. We have fewer kids who are, um, and so our cost per pupil for food is higher, almost by double, if I can remember um, correctly, which is a really interesting sort of thing to, I'm wondering if you want to look at that. Um, Why is it double? Well, the cost, because fewer students, well, but it's also high school. I'll make your fixed cost. Right. The same. If fewer students are. You can't amortize the number. Right? Yeah. Um, which sort of begs the question about centralizing food services, perhaps, that it might cost us less if, in fact, some of those services were more centralized. That's just a yeah. forecast for next year that we want to look at at the OSSU budget. But um, I thought that was really interesting um, and was wondering, is it because students need to go eat lunch? Can they leave during school? To go? Um, seniors that can send themselves out can, yeah. And um, NHS members. But there's only two juniors, so. Oh, so that's interesting. I mean, I know more kids that just opt not to eat anything during lunch periods, like not even bring stuff from home. Just because, like, either the food's not. Especially for vegan vegetarian students, if, and the ve vegan vegetarian option is not food, <laughs> per se, <laughs> um, it's really hard. And so most kids just opt not to eat the lunch mm -hmm. at, at all. So. Okay. Do you have a sense for what percentage of the students are vegan? I don't. Uh, vegan? I have no idea. But I, I have a. I have a, directly have a friend who's pescatarian who has a very hard time eating food. What? I'm a pescatarian. Why? Hello. I have two friends who are pescatarian. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I, my student friend um, has a really hard time getting lunch at school because there's usually the option is like the same every time, and so there's no variance in meals, um, and it's just like a bean burger and. He doesn't, right. it's not like fun. So he just, just, just opts not to eat. For an update, uh, John recently met with food service coordinators and we're looking at um, improving the quality of the food. I support that. Mm -hmm. I'll vote yes to that. Yeah. And does that mean choice or what does that mean more local? What does improving food quality mean? So part of it ties into the discussion Amy was talking about, um, but also, yeah, uh, you know, purchasing local, uh, ensuring that, that uh, you know, we're supporting local folks, also getting quality food and, um, you know, surveying students to see what they're interested in. Uh, so really on another, another several different fronts generally yeah. I think what's really hard for a lot of students is like especially for like fruits and vegetables like it's hard when you have to pay money to eat canned fruit like that doesn't seem fair where it's like I could bring this myself but like versus like fresh fruit like I love it when they have like apples like that are directly from a local orchard and and the maple syrup's all local too where it's like oh cool like something that's tasteful and local and, and wonderful versus like canned peaches and it's like why am I paying three dollars for part of this like I don't know it's you're not serving canned peaches oh yes and every morning yeah. <laughs> I remember yeah. those the same yeah. can. Every, every <laughs> <morning>. <laughs> Honestly, but I haven't used like, them up yet. No one will eat them. Yeah, no one will eat them. Honestly, but they keep a low touch. Yes, very few shelf stable. I don't know, man. That, that's what the the number is. Where it's like, oh, he's not spending less because less students eat food. It's like, well, less students eat food because it's not <laughs> worth it. Like, it's not. And that's not. Listen, I don't want this to come across where it's like I'm attacking the lunch ladies or the program. <laughs> I love the lunch ladies so much. They're one of my favorite parts of the day is going through the lunch line. Um, just because they're so funny. They're just such like wonderful people. But it's like it. What sucks is like 
this is obviously just because of how much money they have to spend on these kind of services, and this is what reflects that, and that sucks, and it sucks that then they get the brunt force of it from students that don't necessarily recognize that, where it's like, why are you serving me this? So it's like, oh my god. For so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I support better lunches and local lunches. That's all I have. Manger le gâteau. David David mentions uh, was I supposed to put that on? If I did, I let it draw. So David mentions that uh, one discussion item uh, was uh, funding for the uh, associate principal? Not, not funding. The funding's already been approved. It's the notification oh, yeah. uh, posting for it. There's some, uh, the okay. posting. Uh, so that's a contract matter? Uh, no, it's a budget matter. Well, the money's already in the budget, isn't it? But it hasn't been approved. I thought we approved. Hasn't been approved. Yeah. Yeah, the budget hasn't been passed. It was approved so by the board. It's yeah. hard to post for the position if you don't oh. have the money. Yeah, but it's a um, an issue that could otherwise um, bias. What's that uh, other reason you go into executive session? Potentially, um, it's information that uh, compromises. Sure, it compromises, compromises to the. Yeah. Sure. Oh, about the contract terms, and those contract that, terms. That would be uh, something we're authorized to deal with in executive session. Um, we should do that, but we're we're on the consent agenda uh, now. I, I don't think that's part of the consent agenda. Um, what what is your pleasure uh, with the consent agenda? Is is there a motion to uh, approve the consent uh, the consent agenda? Uh, minus the treasurer's report, which, which is this month's treasurer's report is not in there. We'll probably see it in the next couple of months. So that would be items, uh, consent ag agenda items number one and two. What is your pleasure? Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda and pass it? So Moved by Amy, seconded by uh, Michael. Any any discussions? Any further discussion on that item? Items one and two of the consent agenda. If there are no further comments, let's close discussion and go to the vote. All those in favor of the uh, consent agenda, all those in favor of passing it, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, abstain. Passes unanimously. Ten. All right then. Um, let us uh, talk about the uh, contract terms in uh, executive session. Uh, so is there a motion to go into executive session uh, to talk about uh, contract terms for personnel? Yes, I'll make that motion. Okay, so I think that's all we need. We're in executive session. <laughs>